Hey, my name is Andrew, and this is Red Blue Labs. Today we're going to be talking about VirtualBox and PFSense. So grab yourself a coffee, and let's get right to it. If you don't have VirtualBox already installed, make sure you do that, okay? You're going to see a link in the description on how where to download VirtualBox. And additionally, you're also going to want to be able to download an ISO file of PFSense. Honestly, just go to Google and type download PFSense, and it's going to be the first one here. That should bring you to this page. And what I do is find the AMD and pick a ISO installer and then pick whichever mirror makes sense to you. For me, I would pick, I pick USA and then go ahead and download it. Okay. Let's move ahead. Assuming that you've got the ISO file downloaded correctly. All right. So what I like to do is make a brand new virtual machine. So we're going to hit next. And we're going to give it a name, make, put whatever name makes sense to you. And pick Linux. And we're going to go to, I typically choose a Debian 64, which is fine. It has, I have never had any issues with it. Now for PFSense, it's a pretty lightweight operating system. So you don't really have to have it, give it a ton of, of uh, memory. However, if you're going to be having a lot of uh, traffic going more, so I could go to 512. Right now the default is uh, one gigabyte. So I'm going to leave it at one gig. We're going to create a virtual hard disk now. We're going to do a VDI as our first option next. And I always choose dynamic. Okay. We don't, I don't actually want to carve out space in my hard drive for this VM that I'm making for you today. Now, eight gigabytes should be fine, but because it's dynamic, it doesn't really matter. So let's go up to 15 gigabytes. This is more than enough. Okay. And truthfully, eight is fine too. Okay. So now we've got our machine created right here. Let's go and make some modifications to this machine right now. So go to the settings for that machine. And what I like to check out first is we go to system and remove floppy. And I'm going to bump the hard disk all the way to the top and bring optical up one as well. And so what this is going to do is that when I boot up my operating system, it's going to check the hard disk to see if there's an operating system on there. And when we first do an install, it won't be there. So nothing's going to be there. And it's going to go to the next option, which is going to be the optical drive, which is actually going to have the ISO file. And then it's going to start the process of installing the operating system. So this is good. We'll leave that there. Go to your network. Now this is a very important piece. <clears throat> and because we're building a virtual router, let's build a machine with two interfaces. We need to have the first one being our WAN interface. And we're going to leave that as NAT. Our second interface is going to be our gateway. So we are going to enable that. And I'm going to set it up as an internal network. And we can give it give it some name that makes sense to you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as LAN one. Makes sense to me. We've got two two adapters here, and I want to do the final step in here, which is actually put the ISO file in there. So let's go to storage, and we're gonna navigate to where our ISO file lives. And we're gonna go to add, and make sure you've got the right one selected, and hit choose. Awesome, we're ready to go. We can turn this machine on. So hit OK, and we're going to power it on. And we are now going through the initial stages of installing the PFSense machine. We're going to fly through the first the first few steps, and it's going to be great. <laughs> it's pretty fast. It's a pretty fast install. Just sit back and have some coffee at this point. All right, so we are ready to go through the wizard of installing the PFSense machine. So we're going to go through this and if you want to pause the video at any moment, moment in time, feel free to do so. Uh, I've, I've installed a PFSense a number of times so I, I kind of have to fight the urge to just fly through it. Uh, but here we go. So accept and we are going to install this operating system. I leave the default key map and depending on what the hardware is on the machine that you're installing this on, you need to be very intentional on this part. So this is the part that can actually break it for you. Um, for my laptop, it won't work with the Z ZFS. So I'm going to pick the BIOS. You'll, you'll be fine if you pick BIOS. 
If you want to go UE, UEFI, go for that too. For today's video, I'm going to choose BIOS. Let me go through the installation process. It's pretty fast. It's also going fast because I chose a gig of memory for it. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. The installation is now finished. Before exiting the installment, would you like to open a shell? No. Do we want to reboot? Yes, we do. So now the machine is going through and it's rebooting. <laughs> oh, look at that. Not much time at all. Uh, we've got our two interfaces. Perfect. Now, we could, from here, throw a machine onto the LAN network, that internal network, and then just have it working because PFSense is nice in that when you set up a WAN and a LAN, the LAN interface comes with default fire rules that just allow everything out. Let's go and actually change this LAN. So you would want to follow these steps. We are going to set the interface IP address. So that's going to be number two. Enter. Which interface are you doing? Number two again. It says right here, LAN two. Now this is the, this is an important step because what we're doing at this point is actually setting the gateway address. So up here we can see that it was 1.1. Let's set this to be some other network. I'm going to choose it to be a 192. 192.168.50. I just picked it out of my out of the air and give it a dot one sure why not now i'd like it to be a subnet with a cidr of 24 so we actually have to type in at this point 24 and are we going to be setting up a gateway upstream gateway no so i'm going to hit enter are we setting it up ipv6 no we don't actually need to do that do i want dhcp turned on on this machine yes i do so let's go ahead and do that. Now this part's important because we are actually setting up the pool for our, our DHCP, the, the available IP addresses that can be handed out when a machine is added to the network. So let's pick the very first one that we're going to do. And remember, we're a 50 is a key number here. 192.168.50. And let's say that the first number is going to be 20. Okay. Enter the final address in that pool. So I want it to be 192.168.50.250. Why not? Let's do that. It could be anything I want as long as it's within that that acceptable range for a, a subnet with of a slash 24. So let's hit enter there. Do you want to do the web configurator? Yes, you do. Now it's going to go through and it's actually setting up our network. Perfect. Do I like this? Yes. And voila, we've got our network set up over here. Let's go ahead and actually add a machine to this network. Let's check out how that's done. And we're going to go over to the configurations, the settings for that Kali machine, and we're going to open up, open up the settings. Go to your network and go to the adapter for your, your host machine that's going to be in that LAN network. I want it to be on the same LAN network that was on the second adapter of my PFSense. So in this case, my second adapter on PFSense was LAN 1. So that means that my first adapter and only adapter on this machine needs to also be LAN 1. So let's do that, LAN 1, we're good. And we're gonna power it on. Okay, let's log into Kali. We booted this, so it should be asking for a, a dynamic IP address at this point. Let's check the IP address. And bingo bango, 191, 192.168.50.20. And that was going to be the first address in our dynamic DHCP pool. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, please go ahead and subscribe. That would be great. I'm so happy that you watched this video, and I look forward to making a lot more. Hey, have a great day. Bye.